My name is Divini, but everyone calls me Div like a shamo. Like the mm -hmm. curly brackets? Okay. I was born in Nigeria. I moved to the U.S. when I was six. Spent most of my life throughout California. Started from SoCal, then I moved to Central Valley, then I went to college at UC Berkeley. And then through college, I discovered I loved programming and I loved technology. And now I'm here in Washington, in Seattle, working as a software engineer at Microsoft. I think it's very important for me to note that I actually, when I was younger, wanted nothing to do with computer science, wanted nothing to do with programming whatsoever. I took a class during my senior year of high school called ITGS. ITGS is Informational Technology in a Global Society. And part of that class was they tried to introduce us to HTML and CSS. And I had a terrible time. At class. All my other friends were picking it up fast. I was struggling. I was still coding or like typing with two fingers. I was so mm -hmm. frustrated. I was like, if programming is like this, I want nothing to do with it. So when it came to applying for colleges, my dad is your typical Nigerian parent, doctor, lawyer, engineer. In his case, it was pick one engineering, <laughs> choose one. I'm like, I don't want to do engineering. So he was like, okay, you want to do business, right? If I give you my blessing to do business, will you like pursue computer science or some sort of engineering as well? I said, okay, I can do that one. Because in my mind, I was like, eventually I'll just drop off this like computer science thing and then focus on my business thing. So I took the pre-intro to computer science course at UC Berkeley called mm -hmm. CS10, the beauty, of, the beauty and joy of computing. And that thing just changed my entire perspective of programming and computer science because instead of seeing it as like this intimidating thing like I saw it as like a way of problem solving a way of thinking through like just like thinking through information and I'm someone that spends a lot of time in my head so it was just like it was just it was, it was just so it just fit so well for me at that time so as I was doing that, I was also taking my business classes. At a certain point, I was like, okay, I can honestly get every single thing I wanted with a business major, with a CS major at this point. And I'm doing better in my CS classes. And I'll just have more time to like focus on that and become a better engineer. So I decided um, second semester of my um, sophomore year when I began like I was taking the one class I needed to declare CS at Berkeley and I was like I don't have enough time to divide my attention this is make or break let me drop this business major and focus on CS so that's what I did and yeah so I eventually got to declare CS the one thing about data especially good data that I like, is it kind of violates the law of supply and demand. So if you think about it, like the more of something that is available, like the less valuable it is because it, you can easily get it. But data, the more data that you have, especially the more good data you have, the more valuable it mm. is, the more insights you can get, the more mm. impact you can make. And that's something that I was really interested in. So for me, I saw that and I was like, oh, machine learning is that makes sense. You're mm -hmm. doing a lot of work with data, you're training models, and you're getting results. So that's why I was like, okay, let me see if I can get there. And that's where I was going to be, regardless of the company I was going to be in. At Microsoft, I'm a software engineer on the Big Maps team. Um, but the work I do is more closely related to applied machine learning than software engineering. So although I code, a lot of my day-to-day -day is looking through data and finding patterns to be able to train models and essentially allow our customers and end users to get the location they want. Location is extremely important and being able to deliver to our users and customers, the quality of locations that they want based on their queries is extremely important to my team. One challenge I faced was really like not feeling like I belonged. And it happened in college. It happens now, not so much, but it happened a lot in college. A lot of students like me, especially my black friends, this was a repeated experience. We'll go to lecture, we'll sit down at so next to someone in lecture, 
the professor said discuss with the person next to you the person next to me is making effort to ignore me and you're expecting me to push consistently push past that even like being surprised when i tell someone oh like i'm a software engineer like you <laughs> are a software engineer yes i'm a software engineer like it's just small things or even like sometimes I feel like I have to be more bubbly and bright and cheerful so people don't get the wrong impression. I'm a human too. I have bad days. Sometimes I walk in and I just want to go to my desk and do my job and mm -hmm. leave. It kind of feels like I'm representing the whole race. Exactly. Yeah. You're, in, you're representing the whole race. And it's not fair because me, I'm just a human being. Yeah. I'm struggling with representing <laughs> myself. Now you want me to carry what? It's hard. It's yeah. hard. And if you are by yourself, going through it like i had friends that i could talk to but sometimes it can feel isolating in mm -hmm. all honesty living tech is something that started randomly so last year i was making tiktoks just for fun like i was just it was some of those stuff that private and the internet will never see them again mm -hmm. but um it wasn't until i started introducing myself to people as like div as an html I was like, you know, my purse ate with my name. Like, my name is pretty cool, objectively, if I end up deciding to do something tech-related. So I was like, okay, let me start making tech videos. A lot of what I do, like, div in tech is, one, I focus on giving advice to students, especially, like, freshmen coming in that have no computer science background, telling them the thing I wish I t someone told me. Like, if you have no CS background, why are you jumping in the class where other people that have serious background? If you don't put yourself in the like beginner class, because you would think it might seem like, oh, all my mates are going into that class. Don't worry, some of your mates are in that class will come and join you later. <laughs> Just you start off there. And, or like stuff like, oh, people that uh, want to get technical experience but don't even have internships, like talking to them about things like open source. Um, eventually, I'm going to start talking about like things like um, hackathons. Like people have this perception that hackathons is for college only, or if you're in a company, that's the only way you can do hackathons. Like, no, there are a lot of different areas. So that's what I want to do. I eventually, I want to also transition into more talking about like just me as like a individual in tech. But humanizing software engineers, that is really what I want to do, humanizing software engineers. Because I honestly think people have this perception that software engineers all we do is code. We are boring. We don't know how to talk to people. I'm like, no. Like, we have lives. Like, we're human beings. Like, we have things that we do for fun. So I want to eventually transition my to humanizing software engineers and showing what like, a software engineer does outside of work also but while still giving tips to people that need it no. closed mouths don't get fed closed mouths do not get fed you be especially like if you are in college and you're applying for new grad tech roles advocate for yourself because i honestly think um a lot of college students when they get in the interview pipeline especially for these big companies they have the mentality that i'm just grateful to be here at the interview Okay, but then your mate is asking specifically what they want. Also ask for what you want. Like you're here, they obviously saw you were talented. They looked through your resume. They chose you for the interview. You're also interviewing them. It's a two-way street. So ask for what you want. Like closed mouths don't get fed. If you um, are a student, don't obsess over the grade Focus on learning the concepts. Like that people that get the grade, wonderful test takers, but are struggling in actually developing because they knew it techni technically, but like actually fundamentally and applying it, like they struggled. And also for people that like don't even like have the traditional college experience, like don't give up, like it's hard. Like recruiting is not easy. And honestly, luck is also involved, but don't give up because all it takes is one opportunity. And once you have that one opportunity, that's when the other doors open and pretty soon you have the to delete your... Right exactly, right. then you have to delete your LinkedIn app because you're getting overwhelmed. For people that are working in tech currently, get a hobby outside of your job. Like, do something outside of your job because if you don't, it's so easy to feel like, what am I actually doing in life? Like, I'm just... Is this company my life? And it's not bad to, like, 
want to do the best that you can at your job, but you also are a human being. Like you have wants, you have needs, find your passions, find something to do outside of work that will allow you to at least keep motivated. So when you go back to work, you're not burnt out. Absolutely. Thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. I this is exciting. It. Yeah. Oh, good. Come back and pick it up, please. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Don't apologize. Thank you. Thank you.